Chow Talk is back, baby. Today on Chaw Talk episode 10, I'm gonna update you guys on all the exclusive content that's been going on this off season, my marriage life, everything that's been taking place. It's gonna be fun, gonna be exciting. Let's go! Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. Welcome back. Chaw Talk episode 10, let's get it. Doing good, man. I'm blessed. You know, uh, been a great off season so far. Uh, things have been going great. Uh, newlyweds, got married. Uh, everything is going good, man. Uh, glad to be back. Child Talk episode 10, baby, let's get it. Man, it was amazing, man. Uh, on a mega yacht in uh, Anguilla, the Caribbean. It was amazing. Uh, I'm married to love of my life. Uh, you know, everything was great, man. Uh, you know, being on a yacht in the middle of the ocean, just seeing the beautiful water in Anguilla, you know, clear blue water, uh, marrying someone that you want to spend the rest of your life with, man, that's, that was amazing. And uh, I'll do it all over again if I have to. Yeah, she planned all of it out. You know, she's pretty, you know, we didn't, she didn't want to have a wedding planner, so she ended up planning it out. So it was so exciting. You know, she did her thing. Damn near drove her crazy, but uh, it was, it was a, a great thing just to have her, you know, focus in, zone in, plan it out. Uh, connect with the yacht people, the food that we was going to have on the yacht, you know, uh, nightlife, going to St. Bart's uh, after the wedding. So it was great partying, just seeing and having fun with good people, you know. That's, that's what it's most, you know, good about, just having fun with great people that, you know, really enjoy you. Man, just came back from Aspen, man. Aspen was amazing, you know, me and the wife really enjoyed it. The altitude kind of, you know, kicked both of our butts, you know, being 10,000 feet in the air and uh, Aspen kind of routed, but it was amazing, man. I, recommend, I strongly recommend you guys to go to Aspen, Colorado. It's one of the best trips I've been on, and I've been traveling all over the world. I've been this off season, I went to uh, Thailand, which was great, sitting at the Aminyar. Uh, I went to Indonesia, which I thought that was great. Uh, you know, uh, Jakarta, Indonesia, that was great. You know, so I strongly recommend you traveling the world, but definitely go to Aspen, Colorado. It's one of my favorite places that I want to go to again. You know, so definitely gonna have it on the bucket list again this off, next off season. But I strongly recommend you guys going to Aspen, doing dog sledding, doing snowmobiles, <laughs> doing uh, horseback riding. I strongly recommend you guys doing Aspen, one of the, the best trips that I did on my bucket list, for sure. Right. Indonesia, Chanel had to do a, a modeling thing out in, in, in uh, Jakarta, Indonesia, which was really good. You know, fashion over there in Asia is really, you know, where a lot of stuff started from. So, you know, uh, going back, you know, she's, Chanel is Asian, so going back to see people that, that's, that's born in Asia, do their, their fashion was, was really great for her, going back to see like part of her culture, you know, so that was good, you know, so I, I got a chance to experience that, eat some of the great foods in uh, Asia. It was, you know, just the flight was really long. <laughs> the flight is really long, like 21 hours. But once you get over there, it's all worth it, you know. Uh, you know, I even like, when I went to go use the bathroom, I took the toilet and the seats are so warm. The seats are warm seats, so, you know, Asia is definitely, you know, uh, steps ahead for sure. Uh, I actually had a chance to do a Miss Chanel did a Bunya experience in uh, Thailand. And I tell you, if you haven't did a Bunya experience, it's from Russia. If you haven't did that experience, I highly recommend you do it. Everybody can do it because it's very intense. It's like a, uh, I call it like a massage and a sauna. And they, uh, they're gonna put like leaves all over you, like, like hit you with leaves from top to the bottom, front side, back side. And uh, they're gonna tell you, you're gonna take a dip in the cold tub to feel refreshed. That's how intense it is. So if you haven't did it, I'm not even gonna, gonna spoil all the good news for you. I strongly recommend you doing it. To me, it kind of brought me back to life. Like feel like I was looking up at the, <laughs> at the heaven gates when I, when I did it. So I strongly recommend you doing it. It's kind of like refresh your mind, refresh your body, you know, so. I strongly recommend you guys to do it if you haven't tried it out. It's called the Bunya Massage. Please check it out. It's, it's came from Russia. I strongly recommend you guys check it out. That's awesome. That's awesome. 
Yeah, it's, uh, it's very intense. Everybody can't do it. Chanel didn't even finish it. Everybody can't do it, but I strongly recommend you guys do it if you haven't did it. Uh, you know, uh, we got our newborn, uh, you know, Capri Summer got y'all. You know, we have, you know, Callie Cassie, my two stepdaughters, my son Devon got y'all. Yeah, we got a family of four. You know, uh, the wedding was off the chain. Uh, you know, I flew my pastor in, I flew my barber in. Uh, Chanel flew her people in, and you know, we had a great time on the mega yacht. Uh, you know, like I said, I would strongly recommend you guys to have a elope where you don't have a lot of people, you know, because, you know, I feel like you have a lot of people at the way you don't really get to enjoy. You gotta really cater to everybody, stuff like that. So that's the real reason why I feel like we didn't do a big way. We wanted to have elope, you know, so where we can just enjoy one another, you know, enjoy and, and true love, enjoy one another. So I think that's the best thing for people to do. I mean, I'm not telling you to do it, but that's what we decided to do. You know, we have money to do a big wedding, but we decided to do something smaller and something intimate. You know, and we, and we, we enjoy ourselves in the middle of the ocean for three days. You know, as you can see, it was a blast, man. The, the guys put a pool in the middle of the ocean. Uh, I didn't even know you could put a pool in the middle of the ocean. <laughs> so uh, we had a pool in the middle of the ocean in St. Bart's. Uh, jet skis, sea bobs, water slides going down the water. Man, it was anything, everything you can imagine. Then Doc right outside Michael Jordan's boat, you know, so that was pretty dope, you know, so it was just, and you know, if you haven't been, we've been to St. Bart's twice now, so if you haven't been to St. Bart's, you, I mean, you guys get only, St. Bart's is so amazing, you know, that's somewhere where I can see myself being at two after I retire from the game of football, you know, it's just me, it's just, it's so amazing. Yeah, you know, unfortunately, you know, my Tigers lost uh, yesterday. You know, uh, Angel Reese and, you know, Flaw J and, you know, all the greats uh, on, on, on that team. You know, they came up short yesterday against uh, probably the best shooter to ever play in women's, for sure, women's college basketball, if not college basketball all time. You know, she passed Pistol Pete, who had the all-time scoring record in college. So, uh, Kaylin Clark, I'm talking about, she's, I saw her yesterday she, for the first time, she's elite at, at best, elite. She's, she's so good, man, uh, just, but, I, but the most important thing that makes me gravitate toward, towards her as being a great player is how she gets the others involved. Like, cause everybody's so focused on Kaylin Clark. So when she get the others involved to score, uh, had 12 assists yesterday. And you know, like LSU's way bigger than our, but I feel like LSU never made, really made adjustments. You know, if in my opinion, I would have had Flaw J guard and Kaylin Clark not saying she would have stopped her the whole game, but she would have contained her in my opinion because she's more athletic. You know, she's taller. You know, they, you know, you know, Haley Van Left. You know, she she gave she gave Kaylin Clark all she had, and it still wasn't enough. You know, being five seven on a good day. You know, and Kaylin Clark is six foot. You know, so I mean, that's shooting all over you every day. So I mean, uh, I just think that uh, you know LSU should have made better adjustments. But you know, Kim Mulkey. Hats off to them on another great season, you know, reaching the Elite Eight last year, winning the national championship. They'll be back. LSU, as long as they have Kim Markey and long as they keep recruiting good, they'll be back. Because the LSU has been known for having a good women's basketball team way back, you know, Simone Augusta, Sylvia Files, you know. So LSU will be back. I'm not worried about that. But, you know, hats off to Iowa. They uh, earned that win. And, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, we'll see. You know, LSU got tough decisions to make. Uh, Angel Reese and Haley Van Lift, you know, if they're going to go pro. Are they going to come back to school? My opinion, I'll come back to school because the NIL is making a killing. Angel Reese is making a killing, you know, so off of NIL. So I'll definitely come back and, uh, you know, you, you can say, why would she come back? Because she already won a natty. She didn't want the SEC player of the year. You know, I get it, but I think she's making more money than in, in college than she'll make in, uh, in, uh, in WNBA. So i definitely come back, you know, but it's her decision to make, you know, with her family. But I'd definitely come back if I was her and Haley Benley, for sure. I like watching the game on TV more though because yesterday was kind of like, you know, tough because people were standing up, you know, but you can't tell them now because they had a college game, you know. I know a couple of our fans was, was, was mad because people were standing up in front of them, you know, and I was, I had some great seats. I was d d damn near like on, like on the floor. I was like three levels up from the floor. So I had some great seats, you know. Uh, so definitely uh, I like watching it on TV more because I tell people, because I'm no discredit to nobody, but. You know, I, you know, fans say some ignorant stuff sometimes. Like, they'll say something that's, you know, and I'm a sports guy, so it it kind of hits me different, you know, when fans say, 
uh, you know, I heard somebody say something that really was disturbing yesterday. You know, uh, they said something about Angel Reese, and, and she gets a lot of, you know, criticism, you know, from just being herself. You know, I, fully, I truly believe that she's being herself. She's not trying to be somebody that she's not. I truly believe that that's Angel Reese, you know, and she's confident. She's a confident player, you know. And uh, it's nothing wrong with that, but I, somebody said something, you know, if she wasn't this tall, she'll be flipping burgers. And, and it's like, why even say that? Like, like, why even, like, just keep negative comments? Because at the end of the day, these are still kids. These are college kids. Like, I know Angel Reese looked like a, you know, she looked the part, but she's a kid. At the end of the day, she's a, a, a young woman. She's going to be a, gonna be a woman one day. And, and she's still young, though. I don't know. She's probably still, like, about 20, 21. You know, she's still young. She's a young lady. So I'm just like, just keep the comments to yourself, you know, because at the end of the day, like, they take so much. Like, even at football, like, any college athletes, it takes a beating. I'm not just talking about injuries. They take a beating from the fans and like, these are still kids, you know. But at the end of the day, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, uh, Caitlin Clark, man, she's elite. <laughs> she's elite and hats off to her an hour. I don't, I don't have them winning it all, but it wouldn't surprise me if they win it all. My sleeper, of course, is NC State. But I think NC State time is going to fall short. That girl from NC State, number 10, I don't know her name, but she's a baller. I think that, I think that time is going to fall short against South Carolina. I think South Carolina is going to win it all. I think Dunn Staley is out to make a statement. Gino Ariema from UConn. I mean, you can't discredit him. 11, what, national, 11 national championships at UConn. He's, he's the GOAT. So you can't discredit him. But I think South Carolina is going to, I think they're going to make a statement and win it all. They're going to go undefeated and win it all. Yeah. Let's take a, take a pause on that. Take a, take a pause on just watching LeBron and appreciate greatness. LeBron is the greatest basketball player to ever play in the game. I was, in, I was born when Michael Jordan was playing, but I didn't watch Jordan. Of course, Space Jam is all probably, every movie we all watch Space Jams, you know, you see a black ball head guy, you know, it's Michael Jordan with a hoop earring in his ear, <laughs> you know, it's Mike. Uh, Mike is definitely deserving to be called the greatest all time. You know, what he did, won three rings, took a break, came back and won three more. But I just feel like in this era of today, it, they, they, people are so much like bigger, faster, stronger. The Kevin Durant's, the 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 Ant Man's, <laughs> the Lucas. I can I can go on and on. The Jason Tatum's, the Jalen Brown. Man, it, it, they're so much athletic. And no discredit to Larry Bird was a great player, but Larry Bird is wasn't athletic like Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown. You know what I'm saying? Like, it'll be hard for them to score these days. And those guys, you they can also say, back in the day. Oh, we can uh, we allow to touch a little more on defense, like the Gary Paytons, great defensive player. But Gary Payton, G Gary Payton was hand checking the heck out of people. You can't do that nowadays. So now you got to be an excellent defender by moving your feet. And I just think LeBron, like he didn't accomplish every award, every accolade. You the, the greatest scorer of all time, like top three or top four in assists. And we talking about this man had the pressure coming out from high school. He didn't go to college. He went from high school to lead. LeBron is the GOAT. And, and, and I was one of the guys five years ago saying LeBron is not the GOAT. Maybe three years ago. Le maybe since yesterday. <laughs> Two days ago when I saw him. But man, what he did, like just, uh, just finally to appreciate. I know, I know I watched LeBron a couple times, like courtside. But I think I really appreciated greatness that night, the other night against Brooklyn. Nine threes at 39 years old, 21 years in the lead. I don't think y'all know how hard that is to run around against guys like Cam Thomas from Brooklyn, who's gonna be a heck of he, who's gonna be a heck of a player, LSU alumni, who's gonna be a heck of a player in the NBA. He's already a heck of a player. He's a really he's a baller. So just to run around with guys like that and guard them and still get it done and having this team a chance to be in the play in and in the playoffs this season at 39, bro. I mean, that's incredible. I mean, I think he's the greatest of all time and you know, people's gonna people. Everybody has opinions, but LeBron accolade speaks for itself. Yeah, yes, he don't have six rings like Jordan, but he didn't got every accolade that Jordan didn't didn't get. You know, so in my opinion, he's the goat. One of the things that happened at the game uh, the other day when I took my son to see LeBron. You know, LeBron actually had a chance to take a photo with my son, and that was like his highlight of the game. His highlight of the game. Brian was finishing up his interview on it with the headsets, and the lady, you know, had, had the security right there. Of course, LeBron is LeBron. He's all-time fam famous. 
And I was like, Brian, can you take it? Would you mind taking a picture with my son? And Brian's like, sure. Like, you know, dap me up. I got the phone, uh, took my son, like two photos with LeBron. And man, on this, he don't even realize like that picture, how many kids would die. Because he had so many kids like trying to get a picture with Brian. And Brian like, you know, heard my deep voice. Hey, Brian, can you take a picture with my son? And he ended up taking the picture. And man, on the picture, you can just see his face. It just says it all. And like, that's a picture he's going to have for life. Like, you know, I'm going to blow it up and have it in, and have it in our home in Florida. But that's the photo he's going to have for life, man, because that's the GOAT. Like, LeBron is the GOAT, even if that was Jordan, you know. That's the picture he's going to have for life. And I'm so excited that I got to capture that photo for him, you know, being his dad on, on Easter Sunday, you know. So, man, and it has so many kids. Like, LeBron, LeBron, LeBron. And... For him to get that photo, man, that's speechless. I was just like, that's just a proud dad moment for me. Man, uh, yeah, I'm a big Kawhi guy, so my pick, and I love Boston, of course. Uh, I love them even more by being in Boston playing for the Patriots. But uh, I think the Celtics and the Clippers are going to make the finals, man. I, I'm, I'm really strong on the Clippers, man, because I just want to see them stay healthy. And of course, if they don't stay healthy, Kawhi, somebody gets hurt, their season is over. But uh, if they can stay healthy, man, I think they're going to be tough to beat in the final, in, in seven games. I think it's going to be tough. You know, uh, I think the Celtics are going to win the East. Can't sleep on the Miami Heat, Jimmy Butler, Jimmy, Jimmy Buckets, as I should say. Uh, they're going to be, I think they're at seven right now, six or seven seed in the East. So, I mean, if you're in Milwaukee, you're hoping uh, they don't be at seven because you, Milwaukee got to play them in seven games. They can easily beat Milwaukee. Uh, I love Anthony Edwards in the West. I love uh, S, uh, SGA in the, in the West. He's tough. I think he should win the MVP. He's had a great season. I think Stephen A put a stat up yesterday where he, he missed on like three games this season. And he's averaging like, he has like uh, 50, 30 point games the most. And like, it's ridiculous. So, he, I mean, everybody's going to say Jokic. Some people's going to say, you know, Jason Tatum, rightfully deserved because he's got the best record in the whole NBA, not just the East, the whole. So SGA, Jason Tatum, Jokic, Luka, who's been going crazy with Kyrie. Uh, all those guys deserve to have been in the conversation. So, but I think SGA should take it home. Wouldn't be surprised. Who I think is going to win is probably Jokic. Who I think should win is SGA. I think Jokic probably going to win because they're, they're number one in the West now. Uh, you know, Tatum could easily win it too, so I wouldn't be surprised. But those are my kind of votes. If I'm voting, I'm voting. Uh, if I'm voting, I don't get a right to vote, of course. But <laughs> if I was a voter, I'd vote SGA. Secondly, probably be Jason Tatum because the Celtics got the number one team in the, in the whole NBA. But uh, yeah, that's that's kind of like where I'll go. I, I, my my finals matchup is the Celtics and the Clippers. Uh, I think uh, the, the, the Clippers will go to the finals because they have a bench. I think their bench with Norman Powell, Russell Westbrook coming off the bench. I mean, they, those are two players could easily be starters on any other team in the NBA. Uh, Russ uh, sacrificed coming off the bench this year, you know, with Kawhi, James, with James Harden being in the lineup as a point guard, uh, Paul George, and Norman, Norman Powell, you know, him or Russ could win sixth man of the year, you know, easily. You know, they're, they're the two best six men in the NBA. Uh, the Celtics, of course, you know, and uh, Porzingis, it's always going to be great for them. A big man that can stress the floor. You know, he's going to be a different matchup for guys, for bigs to step out and guard him on a three-point line. You have Al Harford, who's still getting it done at, I don't know how old he is, too damn old. <laughs> still getting it done. Uh, uh, Jason Tatum is Jason Tatum. Uh, you know, he's a, he's a, you know, MVP candidate. Uh, Jalen Brown is an is a electric fire. Stud, you know, who can explode any night in the garden. So, uh, you know, and uh, my man's uh, the guy, the shooter, number 11, Pritchard. Pritchard is balling, you know, mad shooter. You got so many, you got so many guys, the, the Boston, the team who always goes to the finals, in my opinion, is the teams who have a good bench. When Golden State made their runs, they had a good bench. Wiggins, he was a starter, then he came off the bench. You know, so... Uh, Iguodala, when he guarded Brown in the finals. He didn't lock down Brown, but he guarded Brown enough. He contained Brown enough to where they can win. You know, so, you know, teams are, you know, you got to have a good bench in the NBA, in my opinion, to make it to the finals. Because if it, your starters might not have a good night 
every night. You need somebody off the bench to give you that boost of energy. So that's why I think the Clippers and the Celtics are going to – my two teams to make it to the finals because they're bent. We know about Paul George. We know about James Hunt. We know about Kawhi. We know about Tatum. We know about Brown. We know about Porzingis. But who's going to provide that sparks coming off the bench? The Pritchards, the uh, Norman Powells, the Russell Westbrook. You know, those guys coming off the bench. The Al Hoffords. I don't know if Al's a start starter, but the Al Hoffords. You know, guys like that are, are, are X factors, you know. So you need guys like that to make it to the finals. And that, those are the reason why I got those two guys. Of course, the, the Clippers doesn't stay healthy. Celtics doesn't stay healthy. Doesn't stay healthy. All this stuff goes out the window. But if those two teams stay healthy, those are my two finals predictions. The Celtics versus the Clippers. Man, it's tough to go against Boston because... You live there, you know, you want, you want to be a loyal fan just by being with the Patriots and you're just building, just building, you know, uh, relationships with those guys and stuff like that. But <laughs> it's tough for me to go against Kawhi in the finals. <laughs> it's tough. Kawhi has won finals MVP every time he's been in the finals, knocking off Golden State, beating LeBron with San Antonio, guarding LeBron in San Antonio. He guarded LeBron from down the court to that end of the court, to that end. So, you know, down and down. He got to LeBron. I remember in San Antonio, of course, he had Tim Duncan, you know, uh, Tony Parker and Mano Jalobini and all them. But, you know, he got to LeBron one-on-one -on -one the whole game, you know. So, it's tough for me to go against Kawhi in the finals. But that'll be a great finals, man. You know, you're putting a lot of pressure on me being in Boston, man, being a Patriots guy. But if I had to go with a team, I think it would be the, the Clippers. If those two teams meet up in the finals, wouldn't be surprised if Boston win. You know, Jason Tatum is very hungry. You know, he know he's facing a lot of criticism, but he's still young. People don't understand, like, people criticizing him about winning the NBA championship. He's still young. He got time to get over the hump, but, you know, time is definitely taken down. Definitely. So next, let's take this conversation outside as we ride around and go get some food. Let's go. Riding around in my Rolls Royce, you know, something like, I rented it, don't tell nobody. <laughs> First of all, thank the Lord for waking up, get a good workout in, and just uh, you just kind of like just be myself and just kind of, you know, ride around neighborhoods sometimes. So, chill in the house, watch movies, you know, never know, you know, or just go to sporting events, you know, which I love to do. Uh, you know, that's about it. I'm I'm pretty chill. I'm pretty laid back. You know, don't really do much. I'll travel. You know, travel is like my favorite thing to do, besides going to sports events. You know, uh, but I like to watch basketball a lot too. I'm a big basketball fan. You know, I was a basketball player. I was a hooper. I was pretty good, you know, just wasn't, you know, six, seven, six, eight, <laughs> you know, or I'll probably be in the NBA right now, but, you know, those who know, who know. But uh, other than that, you know, just uh, relaxing, man, just spending time with the fam, uh, spending time with my newborn daughter, uh, be with my son uh, when, when he's on breaks, you know, and just, just kind of relax, you know, spending time with my wife, just doing what I do. Uh, if I'm not working out, I'm just, you know, just relaxing, being with the family, that's about it. Uh, yes, we got a big event coming up in Boston, you know, it's going to be, it's, we haven't released it yet, but it's a big event coming up in Boston, you know, uh, I think it's around Mother's Day, so it's going to be for the mothers, as you know, a big event's coming up, keep that on your calendar. Uh, we have the football camp coming up, uh, Charter Island football camp come up every year, it's in June in Louisiana, that's coming up. Uh, we're going to have to do something for the fathers also in Louisiana, not Boston, in Louisiana, like a Father's Day thing in Louisiana. So that keep that on your radar also for the Charter Island Foundation. And uh, I think that's about it. And then we, all, we do a back-to-school giveaway every year before school starts. So that's about it. Those four events I just told you about, that's two, two new events that's on our agenda that we didn't do every year that we're doing now. It's going to be the Father's Day uh, lunch dinner, and it's going to be the Mother's Day uh Mother's Day event. I'm not gonna tell you what it is, but it's coming soon. It's gonna be in Boston. Father's Day is gonna be in Louisiana, so can't wait for you guys to see it. Uh, and yeah, that's about it. Other than that, just getting ready uh, for you know off season. You know, season really don't start since September, even though they like to think it starts in April for off season workouts. But it's not football. It's you know, the real football doesn't start till September. All you can do now is prepare for September. You know, so that's about it. I love it, man. You know, uh, we'll see, you know, how it goes. You know, I got plenty of faith that it's going to go the right way. You know, big fan of uh, Gerard Mayo, uh, great guy, great leader, 
the changes that they made. You know, of course, Bill Belichick is going to be missed. You know, the greatest coach of all time, in my opinion. Uh, he's going to be missed, but, you know, big fan of Gerard Mayo, so, you know, couldn't give it to a better guy. You know, Robert Kraft made a great decision, you know, when he hired, you know, Gerard Mayo after, you know, the Bill Belichick uh, era. So, couldn't have uh, gave it to a better guy. Uh, you know, the defense is going to be pretty much the same. Uh, you know, we're going to do what we do, multiple offensive personnel. You know, I'm not an offensive guy, so uh, I don't know what they're going to do, but hopefully it's going to be something good. So uh, I'm a big fan. I can't wait to see it. can't wait to uh, get into it and uh, just get around the team, get around get around the guys and, you know, build the great relationships that we had, you know, the past couple seasons, you know, got a couple new faces. So, uh, you know, it's going to be good. Uh, can't wait, uh, you know, but like I said, it's April. Football season doesn't start until September, so I know everybody's getting excited, but just pump the brakes and wait till September. <laughs> I'm feeling good, man. Uh, feeling healthy. Uh, you know, after the season, you know, you have, uh, you know, aches and bruises and, you know, stuff bothers you throughout. Nobody's never 100% in football. So when people be like, oh, I'm feeling 100%, no, you're not. Because nobody's never 100% because you're always dealing with nicks and bruises. And if you're not, that means you're probably just not. Going harder, you're probably not playing. I'm not trying to be mean, but that's just the reality of it. You know, so everybody deal with injuries in football. It's the name of the game. So just something you have to deal with and just uh, it's mental. You know, your mind is the most strong, the, the, the strongest part on your body. Mindset is everything. So if you can have a strong mind to defeat a lot of stuff, Nine times out of ten, you're going to defeat it. If you tell your mind that you can't do it, nine times out of ten, you're not going to do it. So your mind is the most powerful thing on your body. I tell people that all the time. I tell my wife that all the time. So, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, it's going to be interesting. Can't wait. Paris is always great. It's always, it's always great being in Paris, you know, uh, you know, especially when you take the wife. You know, she spent most of her career in Paris, you know, being a supermodel. So it's always great going to, going to Paris and... Uh, Going to shows is always great, you know. That's like I told uh, my wife. My wife knows that that is like therapy for me, you know. Like just going, like just fashion is therapy. Uh, but uh, Louis Vuitton, Pharrell, he's doing his thing. Uh, the collection was great uh, this spring uh, when I went to the show. Me and my wife, that was awesome. The kind of the cowboy, cowboy uh, collection. You see Beyonce doing the the, the cowboy uh, country album. So that was great seeing that. Uh, but you know, one of my fa Louis Vuitton is one of my favorite brands. Always have been. You know, when they had Virgil, you know, Virgil's the goat. He's the goat of goats. Uh, but you know, Bottega is really like <sighs> Bottega is probably like probably my favorite brand. Like Bottega, I love Louis. Uh, they're definitely top three. Loewe is definitely top. You know, I have a lot of Loewe pieces, but Bottega is like I feel like I love Bottega so much because it's. It's like that, 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 like classy, luxury. Like we don't have the brand, we don't have to put labels all over our clothes. But you know, it's Bottega, the leather, the patterning. Like I just feel like that brand is just like it's me. Like I'm such a like, I like to dress street style, but I'm such a classy guy when it comes to like dressing, button ups, leather jackets. You know, I'm just such like Bottega just. The brand just speaks to me, like the bags are very like, you know, you know Bottega to have that, that certain pattern, you know, of course I got, I got some bags of Bottega that I wear, but that certain pattern that they have, like that, that stitch, it's just untouchable, you know, so that's my favorite brand as of right now, you know, Pharrell, what he's doing at Louis is, you know, undeniable, great, uh, Loewe, uh, J.W. Anderson, great, of course, uh, you know, uh, Balenciaga is going to be Balenciaga. You know, always going to have pieces that I love. Prada, uh, Prada always going to be great. You know, Miss Miss Prada, what she's doing, and the Rap Simmons, that's always going to be great. Uh, you know, it's just got a lot of brands that I like. You know, a lot of things that I like in different brands. You know, Dior, Kim Jones, perfect. You know, so it's just a lot of stuff that I like in brands that I, that, that I look for. What I don't like is when people, like, logo their brands all the time like with you know Dior Dior Louis Louis I don't really like that I mean I know they have to do that but that's not I'm not really a fan of that so that's kind of like a mm, that's kind of like a uh, 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 minus to me and I don't like also when people dress in designer from head to toe 
like, you know, you can, I can go to Walmart. Like I was, I was hearing Cam Newton said something about this, about, you know, dressing designer from head to toe. It's not like fashion and it's really not, but you know, I can go to Walmart or Target and get an outfit and still be swaggy because I know how to put stuff together. But you know, when people just put like stuff that's on the mannequin, like that's not like fashion. Like to me, it's not. You know, and 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 a lot of people talk about having a stylist. Like you know, is that is that? Are you really swaggy? If you got a stylist? You know, I would say this. I don't knock having a stylist at all. I don't have one personally, but I don't knock people who have a stylist. You know, some people have a stylist for different reasons, whether that's to go shopping for them to get pieces because they're an athlete or they're an actress or you know whatever. Not because they have they want a stylist to dress them because they want the stylist to get the pieces that they that they can't get because their time is busy, you know what I'm saying? So I don't knock people for having a stylist, you know, it's what you like, it, it what makes you happy. You know, if it's having a stylist makes you happy, get one. I don't personally have one, you know, even though people think I do, but I personally, I don't have a stylist. You know, anybody who, my wife can tell you, anybody who knows me, they know I don't, nobody dress me, I dress myself. And you know, I shop for myself also too. So, you know, I find time to do it. And when I do it, I get it done. So, I mean, but, you know, I don't knock people for that. I mean, but, you know, Louis, Bottega, uh, Loewe, uh, Balenciaga, Prada, those are like my top brands. And Dior, you know, is always up there also as well. But, you know, I got some other brands that I, that I like too, like one, two, three, uh, you know, like brands like that, like, like that's on like the smaller scale, you know, those brands are also great as well. But, you know, I got, you know, I got brands that I, I got brands for days. I got probably a lot of clothes of people that you probably didn't even heard of before, you know, so, yeah. Chalk Talk is back, baby. Thank you guys for watching Chalk Talk episode 10. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. See you guys on Chalk Talk episode 11. Peace.